Welcome to Box Recaps. Today I'm going to explain the movie Con Air, released in the year 1997. The movie starts and we see some superior military personnel welcoming some soldiers who've just gotten back from a successful operation. We then see an army ranger named Cameron. He goes on to see his beloved wife named Trisha, who upon seeing him reveals that she's pregnant. In that public place, there's a drunk man who starts being cheap and rude toward Tracy. When Cameron moves toward him, Trisha stops him and tells him to take her out of there. When they're about to get in their car, the man, along with some more men, comes there and attacks the couple. Cameron tries to defend himself, and in that defense, he ends up killing the man. The next day, we see him in court with his lawyer, and his lawyer goes on to tell him to accept his crime in front of the judge, and that he might be sentenced to four years rather than ten because he has served the country in the military as well. He does as asked, but the judge doesn't really seem to like him much. He goes on to lecture him on how he should not be using his military skills on innocent citizens. He is found guilty of manslaughter and sentenced to seven to ten years by this biased judge. During his time in prison, he communicates with his wife and daughter while taking time to better himself. Cameron's behavior in prison is really good, as he wants to get out of there as soon as possible. He is to be released on the 14th of July, as we see him talking to his cellmate who is also good friends with him. Eight years have gone by, and Cameron is released on parole and is scheduled to be flown back to Alabama on the same day as his daughter Casey's seventh birthday. Cameron is arranged transport on the Jailbird, a C-123 airplane, along with a fellow prisoner, Mike Baby Odell. This prison transfer flight is being used by the U.S. Marshal Vince to transport a number of notorious violent criminals to a new Supermax prison. These include William Billy Bedlam Bedford, convicted of murdering his wife's entire family after he caught her in bed with another man. Nathan Diamond Dog Jones, a black supremacist who bombed an NRA meeting claiming that they represented the basest negativity of the white race, then wrote a New York Times bestseller from prison that apparently is getting a movie adaptation starring Denzel Washington. Johnny 23 Baca, a serial rapist. Joe Pinball Parker, and perhaps the most violent criminal in the prison system, Cyrus the Virus Cyrus who served time for kidnapping, robbery, murder, and extortion, shanked 11 inmates, incited three prison riots, and escaped from prison twice, and likes to brag that he's killed more men than cancer. Prior to the flight, Vince is approached by DEA agent Duncan, who asks to put undercover agent Willie Sims on board the plane to get more information out of drug lord Francisco, before he's incarcerated in the new prison. Vince acquiesces, but insists the agent go aboard unarmed, but Duncan is able to sneak Sims a gun during the boarding pat-down. Shortly after the flight takes off, Jones and Cyrus are able to free themselves with the help of a distraction by another prisoner, Pinball Parker setting the inmate next to him on fire. The prisoners quickly subdue the guards, and Cyrus heads up to the cockpit and quickly kills the co-pilot who came out to settle the riot. There is chaos in the plane, and they start killing the guards in the most brutal fashion. Cyrus seizes the co-pilot's pistol, then quickly takes control of the cockpit to prevent the pilot from reporting the riot and telling the next control center that a small disturbance occurred but is under control. As Pinball is uncuffing the prisoners, Sims attempts to threaten Cyrus with Pinball as his hostage, but Cameron, recognizing that Sims is at a disadvantage since his hostage is a worthless prisoner like Pinball, attempts to talk the agent out of it. Sims ignores the advice and is killed. The pilot there then goes on to tell Cyrus that they have to drop six prisoners in Carson City, and if they don't let him do that, the authorities are going to know something is not right anyway. Cyrus then goes on to talk to all the prisoners and says they have to drop six prisoners and asks who is willing to be dropped in Carson City. As Cyrus organizes the other prisoners to prepare for a scheduled landing in Carson City in order to meet the required number of prisoners being transferred, Pinball informs Cyrus that some of the prisoners who were scheduled to get off were killed during the takeover. Cameron initially decides to get off, hoping to expose the takeover, but reconsiders when he discovers they're placing tape over the mouths of the transferees who are getting off as a precaution, and the pilot is transferred off in his place. His main reason for staying is that Mike is a diabetic, and the injection needles for his insulin were damaged in the takeover and are unusable, so he needs to find a way to help him too. Cyrus comes to Cameron and tells him that his name has also been included in the list of the six people who are to be dropped off at Carson City. 
The man, however, tells Cyrus that he still has to do 15 more years. He's not supposed to be dropped in Carson City. Johnny 23, who happens to be a famous rapist, is after the only female guard on the plane, Sally Bishop. Despite the fact that Cyrus, who also shares a strong disgust towards rapists, has threatened to kill Johnny if he attempts to rape her. After that, he puts on prisoner clothes on a guard and also drops a recorder in his pocket, which he found on Sims earlier, hoping it would attract the attention of the guards on the prison bus. Back in the prison, the guards go on to go through Cyrus's room. In there, they find a lot of suspicious stuff. They also find a map of the plane and some plans Cyrus made to hijack the plane to escape. One of the superior officers goes on to tell his men not to touch anything in the room, but one stupid officer still ends up doing it. He opens a small box in the room, and there's a bomb in there. The moment he opens the box, the bomb gets detonated, and there's a blast. All the evidence and the plans of the high-profile prisoners are destroyed now. The officers do not have anything. Upon landing to refuel and pick up more prisoners to take them to freedom, Cyrus ensures that the prison transfer goes smoothly. Among the new prisoners boarding is a drug lord, Francisco, the mastermind of the escape and who Sim sent to interrogate. Transvestite serial killer Raymond Sally Can't Dance Martinez is also there, their new pilot, Williams, and cannibal serial killer Garland Green, known as the Marietta Mangler, are now on the plane too. Cyrus instructs Pinball to hide the plane's transponder, and despite Cameron's efforts, the plane leaves Carson City without any problems, even though the guards on the prison bus discover the true identity of the prisoners on the bus and backup arrives too late because the prisoners spotted their vehicles approaching the runway. This is when the security head in the prison goes on to contact Cyrus, telling him to give up. Duncan, a DEA agent, gets out of control and goes on to threaten Cyrus for killing Sims. Cyrus tells him that if they're going to keep talking like that, he's not going to talk to them. Vince then goes on to say sorry to Cyrus and assures him that no one will be rude to him now. Cyrus then makes a deal with him. He goes on to say that he will ask one question, and if Vince gives him the right answer, Vince can also ask him a question. Vince agrees. Cyrus goes on to ask how on earth did the police in Carson City get to know about the plane? Vince does not tell him the truth, and just makes something up. Vince then asks his question, as he asks where they're going, and Cyrus tells him that they're going to Disneyland. Vince says that he's lying, and Cyrus tells Vince that he's doing the same thing. After Vince and Duncan discover what happened, Vince, having heard about Cameron from one of their guards, suspects Cameron is on their side. However, one of the officers comes forward and goes on to tell Vince that he has read Cameron's profile, he knows for sure that it is not Cameron, because he was just about to be released. He also says that he thinks Cameron is the one trying to help them from the plane. Vince says that they should come up with a proper plan to stop the plane in time. Duncan is, however, still pissed. He goes on to say that all of them are criminals, adding that he's going to track and kill them all. Vince tells him that it would be really stupid if he did that. Duncan, against Vince's advice, immediately takes off to follow the plane's transponder, which, unknown to him, was snuck aboard a sightseeing plane. Cameron, along with Jones, go into the hall to determine the cause of the plane's slow speed and find that Pinball's body is lodged in the landing wheel compartment, having missed the plane taking off. Cameron takes the opportunity to write a message on Parker's shirt to Vince and pushes the body out of the plane, where it lands in the middle of traffic in Fresno, California. Vince has a meeting with Trisha and Casey to determine why Cameron chose to stay on the plane. Trisha goes on to tell him that he was to be freed from prison on the 14th of July, and he was eager to see his daughter, so he would never do this on purpose. If he is still on that plane, it must be for a good cause. She says that if you read the letters written to her by Cameron, even Vince would agree that Cameron just wanted to get to his family as soon as possible. She then goes on to tell Vince that if he meets her husband, ask him to come home as soon as possible. When a call comes in from Fresno police and Vince is quickly made aware of the message written on the prisoner's clothes which Cameron threw from the plane, Vince recognizes that the prisoner's plane is headed in the opposite direction to the disused Lerner airfield. He right away realizes that Duncan is going in the wrong direction and calls him. Unable to convince Duncan of this information over the radio, he then decides to take a private plane to get to the fields. 
However, a pilot goes on to advise him against it, and Vince then borrows Duncan's Corvette to make it to the field before the plane can land, calling in the National Guard and other forces to help secure the airfield. Back on the plane, Cameron attempts to keep his identity secret. However, Billy goes on to learn his true identity when he discovers Cameron's parole letter in the personal belongings in the hall. He now understands that Cameron is just playing a game with all the prisoners. A fight begins between the two, and Cameron goes on to kill Billy. Cameron learns from Cyrus that Francisco is promising that once they land at Lerner, another plane will be waiting for them to help them gain asylum in the non-extradition territory. The plane lands at the airfield, running aground, but no plane seems to be waiting for them. Cameron comes out of the plane after seeing Mike, who is now in a critical condition. He sees that Nathan is about to kill all the guards, but Cameron saves them by telling Cyrus not to kill them as they could be useful in Plan B. While the rest of the prisoners are forced by Cyrus to dig out the plane after Cameron warns him about trusting Francisco, based on what he heard about Francisco's past treachery. Cameron himself then explores the fields to try to find an injection needle for Mike, who's going into diabetic shock. Vince, also on the field, happens upon the plane that Francisco promised, finding that Francisco has double-crossed Cyrus and is trying to flee on his own, and helps rescue Cameron from Francisco's henchmen who are there waiting for their boss. Vince and Cameron briefly meet and discuss the situation before Cameron leaves to find an injection needle. Francisco slips away from the other prisoners to board his plane and has his pilot take off. Vince is able to disable the plane, and the crash alerts Cyrus, who throws a lit match at the fuel leaking from Francisco's plane, starting a fire and burning Francisco alive. When he sees the cops approaching, he decides to fight them, as their plane is still stuck. He takes out the guns and goes on to explain his plan to all the other prisoners. Taking advantage of the distraction, Johnny finally gets his hands on the only woman on the plane. Mike tries to stop him, but he is barely able to move. Cameron gets there in time and goes on to beat the crap out of Johnny before locking him in a cage. Outside, a full-on shootout is going on, and many of Cyrus's men are killed. Cyrus and the remaining prisoners return to the plane and take off, despite damage to the plane and before Cameron could escape with Mike. When they're on the plane, Cyrus says that there's a traitor among them. Mike takes the blame on himself, and Cyrus goes on to shoot him. Cyrus is now aware of who Cameron is, as he has found his letter and he is about to kill him. Duncan, having recognized that Vince was telling the truth, he orders his helicopter pilot to open fire on the prisoner plane and disables one of the engines, causing the plane to lose fuel. With Cyrus and the others distracted, shooting from the aircraft's ramp at the helicopters, Cameron gains control of the cockpit after hand-to-hand -hand combat with prisoners in his path and orders not to fire. When Vince, in a second helicopter, tells Duncan about Cameron's identity as a parolee, Duncan orders to hold fire and joins forces. Attempting to land the aircraft at McCarran International Airport in Las Vegas, the crippled jailbird is forced to crash land on the Strip, causing mass destruction and killing Johnny-23. Cyrus, Diamond Dog, and Swamp Thing escape on a fire truck, pursued by Cameron and Vince on police motorcycles. The chase leads to the deaths of all three escapees. Cameron and Vince form a friendship before the former meets his daughter for the first time and gives her the bunny. And with that, the movie comes to an end. Subscribe for more videos like this. Turn on the notification and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.